Today I'm gonna be taking you to the underground. Gyphon Underground just made a recent video discussing the huge buff that we got for Gyphon Underground. Silver's going through the roof, so I figured this be a popular spot to make a video on right now, guide you and show you everything that I know as I've put in maybe 30 to 40 hours of grinding in this spot. We're gonna go over the mechanics of the spot. We're gonna go over some basic combos. We're gonna go over your buffs, your gear, your light stones, your artifacts, your crystals. Everything you need to know is gonna be in this video right here. So make sure that you show me some love Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, smash that bell, make that thing ring, and let's get straight to this video. So before you start grinding, you're going to want to make sure that you pick up the daily quest for the extra Caphras. You get 20 Caphras. You just want to right click on the node, which is directly under Grana in the Silvia area, and that will take you directly to the node manager, pick up the quest, and then you can start your grind. So usually I'll be running the Marnie Realm rotation. I just post up right back here. I set my horse up and set my tent up. Sometimes the stupid little mobs will run up on you either way. Dumb, I really think they should fix that. You wanna make sure you're repaired, make sure you have all your buffs. So you want to be running your basic villa scroll your bravery buff your blessing buff and your progression buff if you have a book of combat go ahead and throw that on there too make sure you have your vels heart on and then for your foods and buffs you want to be running a simple cron meal as this is only a 70 percent ap cap zone so you want as much monster ap as you can get then you'll be running the the frenzy draw of corruption and then I also run a Calyx Elixir just because I like that little bit of extra tankiness, some movement speed, and it's really cheap to run per hour. You could switch this out for a Perfume of Swiftness if you want that extra 200 LT. Then if you have any experience scrolls and you want to level up, I would just run these. You know, if you want to run the Mercenaries, that's up to you. This spot is amazing for experience. A lot of people have pushed to level 66. This is a non agris zone, so you will not be running any agris. You want to make sure that you have all your pets teed up here. I have one, two, three, four, five pets, four T4s and one T5. Then for your transfusion, this is the crystal setup that I run because I'm pushing, you know, as much AP as I can get. I got four uh, Macleroids here. I got two crystal of brutal decimation. One Giren's Tear, one Jin Viper for that nice 20 accuracy, two Akrads, two Oculus of the glorious type. Then, of course, we have the Corrupted uh, Magical Crystal, which is going to give you that crit damage. This is huge. Uh, and then, you know, the Rebellious just for that nice HP, all AP against monsters and all AP. And who really gives a crap about that skill experience? I really don't. They really should switch this up, maybe put some combat experience in there instead, if you ask me. For my Lightstone set, you want to run the Wild Kama Sylvia set. This is going to give you 15 extra uh, damage to Kama Sylvia monsters. Plus, if you don't have the new artifacts, then you just want to run the extra AP against monsters. That's really going to help you turn up against these guys. Make sure you've got that Vel's Heart clicked as well. And that's about it when it comes to buffs, light stones, crystals, and gear. In terms of gear, you know, right now I'm running uh, 301, 409. This is plenty of damage here. If I got to maybe the 305 or 309 bracket, I think that I could actually kill the mobs before they turn around, but I'm still getting plenty of trash. Now, with the DP, if you want to test the waters, you could start at 380. Some people have even said they're starting at 360 or 370. 
but it's your choice. If you feel like you're gonna lag or get hit the wrong way and you're wearing a gear and tier, take the risk on your own. Now let me explain the grind mechanics of this spot. This is actually a really interesting spot. It kind of keeps you active and functionally playing the game instead of just mindlessly grinding mobs and running from pack to pack as quick as you can. I would like to see more spots like this in the game. As you can see from the footage, you would want to start on the blue mobs. Now, when I say the blue mob, it could also be the triangle mob as each mob has a separate color. There are three different colors. You have the blue mob, which is a triangle, the purple mob, which is a square, and the red mob, which is a circle. There will be three large statues per room. These are your main targets, kind of like mini bosses. The rest of the mobs will aggro you automatically and the two medium sized statues will die once you kill the big statue or the mini boss esque type of mob. So when you kill the large statue, the mini boss, you will get a random buff that allows you to do extra damage on the specific color that is shown in the message at the bottom of the screen. So make sure you match the buff that you get with the next target. Now let's move on to the random event spawns. There are two event spawns, the Butcher and Despair Hordes, both of which are very important to reach max trash loot potential. Hordes of Despair mobs will spawn after you defeat the Gyphon Rossia Decimator. When this mob spawns at random, you will receive a message across the bottom of the screen signifying that despair has fallen upon Gyphon Rossia. This mob will spawn towards the center of the room, just aggro it and drag it to your next target. Now let's talk about the despair hordes. They spawn after you kill the decimator now when the despair hordes are active you will have a few seconds after killing the statue to kill some extra mobs i found that this increased my trash loot a good amount just make sure you move towards the center and pay attention to which statue you will need to attack next the gyphon rossia butcher is similar but instead of spawning hordes of mobs, killing the butcher will activate all three mini boss statues and give you a special buff that gives added damage to all colors or shapes. Quick pro tip, this buff will last for four mini boss kills. So you can clear the room and kill the next big statue quickly. This is going to increase your trash loot immensely. Kill the butcher as fast as you can and then focus on bursting the room down quickly. Watch out for the purple or square mini boss though because she has a huge AoE and does tons of damage. Now that you understand the mechanics, let's go over basic combo techs that work for any class you play. Each statue will have a defense buff initially while activating. This means you will want to be pre-buffing and debuffing with your skills while this buff is active. Of course, as you see from the footage, you always want to be behind the statue before you start to hit them. This gives you tons of back attack damage. Once the statue activates, then you want to throw your big PP damage skills all up in the statue's booty hole. <laughs> When did I write this? If you have enough AP, then you will be able to defeat the statues before they turn around. If not, you will want to use a skill that moves you behind the statue and continues to do back attack damage. So always remember to focus and pay attention to your colors, pay attention to your event spawns, kill the butcher as quick as you can, kill the despair mobs as quick as you can and you'll be hitting some major trash loot hours here if you get lucky and get a couple necklaces you're going to be netting anywhere from 1.3 to 1.5 billion silver per hour depending on your gear i would say hard capped gear is hitting you know 35 to 37000k trash on a very good class 
if you're sitting around 301 to 305 you're going to be looking at anywhere from 28,000 to 32,000 trash which is still really nice if you get a couple necklace drops a couple origin stone drops you're going to be looking at some really good hours here is some of my data that i've collected uh, after grinding the spot for a few hours on scholar i would like to test the spot more but i think i'm going to move forward and start focusing on some newer content some newer areas so if you enjoyed the video and if you learned anything from the video then make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that like button leave me a comment let me know what your numbers are for Gyphon. and if you're looking for more bdo content then make sure you check out one of these other videos right here because you know they're gonna be lit